Horvat to the Islanders and Tarasenko to the Rangers. It's your move, Capitals. <laughs> Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form, so head on over to YouTube and check it out. My name is Dan Holman. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started today. So in this episode of Locked On Capitals, we are going to talk about the big movements that are going on around the Metro Division. Today, we find out that Tarasenko is, got traded in a move that sent him from the Blues to the Rangers to ultimately really bolster that team. That team automatically just got a lot better. Uh, and then if we take a look back a little bit there, we know that Bo Horvat went to the New York Islanders, bolstering that team, making them that much better. So Capitals, it's your move. It's what what are you going to do next? That's what we're going to talk about in that in this show. Then we're going to talk about the Capitals back at practice, line shakeups, and the latest with Tom Wilson. And then in the last segment, we're going to talk about some potential trade targets. Uh, but just to get it going here, as we talk about the Capitals, you know, and I know I spoke of on the show saying that I don't think the Caps should go out and make any big moves. Uh, but, you know, to a certain extent, you know, it's crunch time if we take a look at it. And some of the teams around uh, the Metro division in particular have got a lot better. Uh, if we take a look at just some of the moves and how this is going to impact their season. So the Capitals currently sit in fourth place. Uh, they have 59 points. Uh, the Islanders, who got Bo Horvat, have 59 points. Um, and then we take a look at the Rangers, who are in third place. They have 66 points uh, with the Hurricanes all the way on top with 76 points. So with the Capitals with 60 points right now, that is going to take a stretch if they wanted to win the Metro. Ultimately, I don't see that happening. That's most likely not going to be the case. But they don't have to win the Metro to, do, to go on and do bigger and better things. But ultimately, the teams that I'm worried about right now are the teams like the New York Islanders, who, you know, I think to a certain extent, myself included, kind of just dismissed as, you know, this isn't going to be their year. But then they go out and sign Bo Horvat. And all of a sudden, Lou Lamarillo saying, you think you know? You ain't got no idea. And, uh, you know, that's just one move that he made. The trade deadline is on March 3rd. So we do still have some time uh, before that happens. So it is going to be a bit interesting to see ultimately what shakes out. Do the Capitals ultimately have anything up their sleeve or are they just pushing all their chips in and going, we're riding with this. We're riding with this hand. If that's the case, I'm here to tell you it's going to be most likely an early exit this year. So. I think that the Caps need to pursue some big moves. We have heard some of the sexy names out there in the NHL, you know, Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taze, and later we'll talk about uh, three defensemen the Caps should target. But, you know, I've spoke of even on this show, Chikrin and Debrinket and uh, Brock Besser, all big names that are, they're most likely going to go somewhere. Why not the Capitals? So, the tough part of for the Capitals is what are they going to give up uh, ultimately to get those players? If you take a look at that Blues deal, and I don't have the stats in front of me, but that was a steal in my assessment for the New York Rangers to get uh, Tarasenko, and they didn't give up a whole lot in return. Uh, some draft picks, there was a first round pick in there, I know, and, and among some other picks in there. But ultimately, they didn't have to give up a whole lot, um, the Rangers, that is, uh, in order to to get Tarasenko. So obviously, the Rangers, who are already you know, doing pretty well, all things considered, like I spoke of off the top of the show there, we're taking a look at the Rangers. The Rangers are in third place in the Metro with 66. The Devils in second place with 70. And like I talked about, the Hurricanes with 76. So 
if the Rangers go on a tear with Tarasenko, I mean, let's face it, that Blues team this year has, um, you know, over the last couple seasons has kind of lost their way. We know that they did really well a couple of years, a few years ago. Time really flies, doesn't it? But they have since kind of lost their way. So they're starting to part with some pieces because obviously what's working out on the ice uh, is not helping them win games. So that's why they moved on from Tarasenko. I don't have his contract in front of me, but most likely this is the last year of his deal, something like that. So in any event, the New York Rangers got a whole lot better. Same goes for the Islanders. So if either one of those teams, you know, the Rangers are already ahead of the Capitals. If they continue to win, they're just going to keep shooting up and it's going to be Carolina uh, and the Devils and the Rangers neck and neck with the top. So where does that leave the Capitals? That leaves them hopefully with a wild card spot, but... If you take a look, just one slot down in the standings, it is the Pittsburgh Penguins, the arch nemesis of the Capitals. What would happen if they caught fire? Could you only imagine? So some some big questions for the Capitals uh, ahead. And, you know, questions for me, and I know what I've said on this podcast, that I don't want them to go out and and make some earth-shaking move out there just to get a player. But, the you know, the line in the sand has been drawn. And the Islanders and the Rangers up to this point said, this is what we're bringing to the table. What are you bringing to the the table, Capitals? And can you even step up to this? Are you just going to go off and to play golf in the offseason like a little you-know-what? Um, so... I think that the Capitals really have to up their game because, you know, ultimately what they have out on the ice right now is not cutting it. That is a Capitals team without Tom Wilson. That's yeah, a Capitals team uh, without Nick Dowd and John Carlson. So there are going to have to be some big moves. And, you know, even if they had all of those players, the three that I mentioned there, do is it still ultimately enough? This aging core... Uh, I mean, let's face it, Alex Ovechkin cannot do everything. He can't win all of these games. So it is going to be tough for Brian McClellan and company uh, as they try to make some moves. Everything that I'm hearing out there is, though, don't expect the Capitals to make any earth-shaking moves. So um, I hope I'm wrong. I know that oftentimes Brian McClellan kind of keeps his cards close to the vest there, and we don't really know what's going to happen until it happens. But my big hope uh, in all of this is the Capitals do make a huge move to help bolster this team, whoever that may be. Uh, if it happens to be Jonathan Taze or Patrick Kane or something crazy like that, uh, the more I'm hearing about it, I hear that Kane has some hip issues, so maybe not the best uh, player to shoot, you know, go for. But then there's the other question, and it's a question that Brian McClellan had to answer last season is, even if I go out and make a big acquisition like that, one acquisition, Say, for example, Horvat came to the Capitals or Tarasenko came to the Capitals. Uh, they're not, obviously, but say they did. Would that ultimately have helped the Capitals go over the top? Potentially, you know, uh, but I'm not, you know, I don't know for sure if that's the case. I don't even know if this Capitals team with Horvat and Tarasenko, even one of them, say you even took both of them, would it ultimately be enough for the Caps to take on the likes of the Carolina Hurricanes, the Boston Bruins, the best of the best in the NHL. I just am really not too sure. And I don't want to get too down in the dumps on the Caps. They killed it uh, in the month of December, but then you had the month of January uh, and everything kind of just, you know, lost its feeling. And, you know, where where is this team going? So it is going to be interesting. It is going to be a litmus test for this Caps team as they take on the Boston Bruins next. Make no mistake about it, if they could walk away from uh, playing the Bruins and pick up a big W, that would bolster their morale. That would bolster my overall feeling of the Caps uh, because there has been times that they've won big games and then they lose smaller games, but the Boston Bruins, who have such an amazing record, if they could find a way to beat them, uh, then I think the fortunes of this team could change. All right, so after the break here, we're going to talk about the Capitals are back at practice after an extended break there during the All-Star break. We'll talk about what what ultimately is going on at practice. We'll talk about the line shakeups. We'll talk about the latest with Tom Wilson. We'll talk about all of that and more next.
This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's the number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make on betting sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now so you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown. And guys, even if you're not into betting, if you put a couple dollars on the games, it makes watching the games that much more exciting. The FanDuel a Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid your winnings instantly. So... So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In this next segment, the Capitals are back at practice, and uh, things are getting a little bit shook up out there as the, you take a look uh, at the lineups and, and you know the lines and the deep pairings and who's out there, but just at practice today. And I understand that this could look you know, quite a bit different when it comes to game day as they take on the Bruins, but at practice today, uh, Nicholas Abe Kubel up on the top line, right wing. Uh, at, so it's Ovechkin, Strom, Kubel on the top. Sherry Kuznetsov and Oshi on the second. Milano, Backstrom, and Johansson on the third. And then Mantha, Eller, and Hathaway on the fourth. So, you know, you take a look at the lineup and things have changed so much. How much better would this Capitals team be right now with Tom Wilson in the lineup? It could make all the difference in the world. He brings the intimidation factor. He's a goal scorer, and uh, he can just, you know, even skate into the vicinity of something, and every everything kind of just goes away. You know, you saw that especially in the game against the Coyotes. That comes to mind. So they could definitely lose uh, use Tom Wilson uh, back in the lineup. That is for sure. When is he ultimately going to be back? Uh, I guess that remains to be seen. Washington got right into it, running lines immediately as the skate kicked off. Head coach Peter Laviolette shook things up, moving Kubel up to the first line and putting Anthony Mantha back to the fourth line with Lars Eller and Garnet Hathaway. The defensive pairings remained the same as Alex Alexiev cycled into the mix. And I think that you know, ultimately, they're just going to try and get um, Alexi of some playing time to see what they have, because Lord knows what's going to happen with that defense. Uh, the blue line for the Capitals, like I talked about in yesterday's podcast, it seems like the Caps defense, it's kind of like walking on eggshells out there. It's going along pretty good right now. Their head is above water, even though John Carlson is out of the lineup. But it, say something catastrophic happened, like Gustafson got injured or Trevor Van Riemsdyk or Orloff, something like that. Then I could think that could change the fortunes uh, of this Caps team for the rest of the season. Because ultimately, they don't have a lot of depth down in Hershey. You know, just grade A talent uh, at the def uh, defense position, in my assessment. So it would be tough. They would almost be forced uh, to make a big move. And Tom Wilson was, in fact, out on the ice, and that is good news for me. Uh, Tom Wilson was on the ice prior to practice, taking things slow and being cautious with his skating. He stayed on just before things started and then skated off for a couple of minutes on his own before heading off. He remains day-to-day -day as he recovers from a lower body injury he suffered uh, January 24th. This in Washington hockey. Now, another player of note, a big name that's on the fourth line, you know, just that really kind of has propelled this Caps team along all season. And it's funny to say that the fourth line is helping your team win on the Capitals. It is Nick Dowd also took a twirl in the morning, but, didn't, but did not practice and remains on the injured reserve. He is still progressing and working his way back after suffering a lower body injury on January 16th. There's no update on John Carlson, who remains off in the distance off in the distance. John Carlson, are you out there anywhere? Because that is going to be the thing that changes everything for me. So 
We know that John Carlson skated in January and they said he's going to be reassessed in the month of February. Well, it's February now. I don't know when that's going to happen. But if, in fact, John Carlson cannot come back, you know, towards the tail end of the season or not the season at all, the Capitals have got to go out and make a big move on the blue line. And I'll talk about three candidates that could be potential suitors for that. But and it's not even just that, but in this particular part I'm talking about, it's John Carlson. And is he going to be good to go? Uh, that is the tough question. Like I talked about, you know, in the first segment here, there's not a lot of time, you know, for the caps to mess around. So uh, it's just the Capitals hold the top wild card spot with 60 points in 53 games played. Four other teams remain in the hunt. The Penguins with 59, the Islanders with 59, the Sabres with 56, Panthers 56, with the Penguins, Islanders, and Panthers all slated to play over the next two days. This was a story by Matt Wyrick. The Caps could find themselves outside the playoff picture entirely when they resume Saturday. It's going to be interesting. These are must-win games. Make no mistake about it. That's why I, you know, uh, with the different guests I've had on there, are you going to want to go with Darcy Kemper? Are you going to want to go with Charlie Lindgren? It's my belief that if either one of those goalies falters, you got to be all in. You got to go with the hot hand, regardless of who it is. I know people like to point to the fact that, you know, Darcy Kemper won a Stanley Cup last year. What are you doing for me lately? Are you going to be able to help this team win games down the stretch here when it means the most? That is the question, regardless of who is in net. I want the winner. I want uh, the, the, you know, the goalie that's going to give them the best chance to win. Washington will have 29 games the rest of the way to solidify its spot in the playoff bracket. Eight of those contests pit the Caps against other wild card contenders with five at home and three on the road so far this season. They're 2-2-1 two, two, and one when facing those teams and trending in the right direction, having beaten both the Islanders and Penguins in January. But what has changed? Well, the Islanders got someone named Bo Horvat, and all of a sudden, you know, I know it's just a small sample size. He has not been there that long, but it seems to have helped propel that Islander team. Is it going to be enough for them to make, you know, a push? Or does Lou Lamarillo, the GM of the Islanders, have more moves up his sleeve? That remains to be seen. As we know, Horvat also did uh, sign an extension to his deal because on paper, when you looked at there, you're like, Bo Horvat, is he a rental after they gave up? You know, I want to say it was like three, you know, pretty decent players. Um, it is a bit interesting, but in any event, uh, the Islanders could be a lot better. Buffalo carries the fourth hardest remaining schedule in the NHL, followed by the Capitals ninth, Islanders 10th and Panthers 19th. Uh, for the Capitals, they opened the second half of the back-to-back -back against the Bruins and the San Jose Sharks. The Sharks, as we know, aren't that great, but for whatever reason, it seems like the Sharks give the Caps fits, especially when they were playing at the Shark Tank. Uh, before uh, playing a pair of games against the Metro Division's top-seeded Carolina Hurricanes, sandwiched around a matchup with the Panthers. So, their schedule lightens up through early March, but they will run through a gauntlet to close out the regular season, eight of nine games against contenders. And as we know, uh, just taking a look at the schedule here, um, like what they talked about. So they're playing the Bruins uh, next, then it's the Sharks, and then they have the game against the Metro leading Hurricanes. Uh, then it's one game against the Panthers, and then it is going to be the Stadium Series game uh, against uh, the Hurricanes there. So it is going to be uh, a tough go of it suffices to say out there. Do the Caps ultimately have what it takes in the tank this year? I guess I'm not too sure. I want to be drinking the Capitals Kool-Aid and tell everyone that this uh, this team is going to, to do great things. But the one thing I'm going to say is this team right now has more issues than Reader's Digest. And I don't know ultimately if they're going to be able to overcome those issues. You know, we take a look at, you know, the myriad of injuries on this team. Is it ultimately going to be enough? You know, Tom Wilson in and out, Nick Backstrom, TJ Oshie, just all of these, the culmination of all of this, are they going to be able to overcome? I know they sit in that wild card spot, but can they persevere or is it just going to be another first round exit or even worse? Is it going to be the first time in a long time that they haven't made it to the playoffs? I want to say there was one year 
I don't have it in front of me, but I want to say one year that they didn't make it with Adam Oates uh, as the coach there. So it has been some time, but uh, ultimately we hope that the Caps have what it takes uh, to make it into the playoffs. All right, so after the break here, we are going to talk about three Really great candidates on the blue line. As we know, the Capitals are in an interesting position as John Carlson is the only blue liner under contract after this season. I have three players that I think could fill that role. Who are those players? We'll talk about that next. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. In this next segment here, this was a piece that I had uh, read, uh, uh, read rather in the hockey writers, and they were talking about uh, three defensemen that uh, potentially might be a good uh, fit for the Caps. As we talked about before the break there, is that the Caps only have John Carlson under contract uh, after the season, I know that, you know, Alexiev and Faravari are restricted free agents, but you ultimately know what I'm saying here. So it does put the Caps in an interesting position. So one of the big names out there for the Montreal Canadiens, and this is the name that first emanated. I remember hearing about it in Washington Hockey. Now, Sammy Silver was talking about it, and she had some kind of inside track about, uh, you know, a potential of Joel Edmondson. Um, and that was the last that I'd heard from her on that. But that was also the assessment of the hockey writers. Joel Edmondson will have another year of term on his current deal following the 2022-23 season with a cap hit of $3.5 million this year. And in 23-24, Caps defenseman Nick Jensen, Van Riemsdyk, Gustafson, Matt Orwin will be unrestricted free agents. Like I said, while Alexiev and Faravari will be restricted free agents. So, and you know, he's still, you know, he's kind of, you know, 29. So it's not super young and it's not real old in hockey terms. It's on the wrong side of 20, as they say. At 29 years of age, Edmondson is a player in his prime that is capable of helping a playoff team. He was with the St. Louis Blues 2019 Stanley Cup winning club and the Canadians when they lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2021 Stanley Cup final season. His postseason experience will benefit a contending team like the Capitals who are aiming to win their second championship in five years. Again, the question remains... Is Joel Edmondson going to be enough? It's going to help bolster the Caps defense. Of course, the blue line. I like that aspect of it. What are they going to have to give up? That's the biggest thing. I don't want the Caps to sell the farm uh, to get him. That is always my big thing. Uh, so the Caps GM, Brian McClellan, has been reluctant in previous years to trade away draft picks, and there's a good chance he will offer future picks and deal by March 3rd deadline. Another NHL insider, Pierre LeBron, mentioned the following about the Canadians defenseman. Joel Edmondson, a shutdown defenseman leadership guy, has Stanley Cup pedigree. The Habs aren't looking to move him, by the way, but uh, there's obviously willing to listen given they are in a retooling stage of their uh, career or their season rather. So it is an interesting thing. Would they ultimately get him? And do you want to start to give up future draft picks? I guess if it's someone that they don't have already, but you know, I just don't want to get into this situation where it feels like it's a rental situation, you know, or they're only going to be here for a short period of time to give up someone like, you know, a Hendricks lob here or a Connor McMichael. I am against that completely taking into account. They will listen to offers, but are actively uh, looking to move Edmondson. GM McClellan will need to part with a first round pick. Uh, a deal could get done if he offers a 2023 first round pick, a 24 third round pick and Connor McMichael for Edmondson. Okay. So I'm already against this deal. And you know, I've had different guests on this show and they see it as Connor McMichael being someone to part with, you know, I'm willing, you know, I want the caps to win this season, but I, I would almost rather this season be a loss despite what I said earlier in the show. <laughs> If it means that they're going to gut that farm team and just have them be this old team, that is why this Caps team is in the position they're in right now because they've been constantly in win now mode. Whatever it took, you know, draft picks, you know, someone in Hershey, you know, a future draft pick, that is why they're in the position that they don't have you know, a really good farm system to use a baseball term. Uh, so I, I, I'm i ulti ultimately against them moving on from Connor McMichael. I want, I still see a potential 
for Connor McMichael on this team. I do not want to see them uh, move on from Connor McMichael. Um, it just seems, you know, I hear his name brought up more and more and more, and it just seems to me uh, that that would be a player that the Caps would regret uh, moving on from, you know, and that's my assessment on it. So one of the other players is Vladislav Garakov from the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, he is a name I've heard around the league, uh, 27 years old and entering the last year of his contract. He has an average annual value of 2.8 mil, which is more affordable than Edmondson's yearly earnings uh, from sports. Sportsnet's 32 thoughts on January 21st. Jeff Merrick mentioned the Blue Jackets asking price will be the substantial for the defenseman and mentioned their trade of David Savard at the 2021 trade deadline in which he received a 2021 first round pick and a third round selection in the 2022 from this Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, so again, you know, it's a defenseman. Is it going to help bolster this team? Uh, Garikoff, like Edmondson, is another top four defenseman that could capitalize in a top pairing role with the Capitals with Carlson is working his way back from injury despite having difficulty reaching a contract extension with um, uh, his team Russia native the Blue Jackets could get a first round pick in return for him which is valuable particularly for a club that is rebuilding as we know the Blue Jackets are tanking this year they are in the Connor Bedard sweepstakes. So ultimately, and I know they say the teams don't tank, but if you take a look at them, they have 34 points. The Blackhawks have 35. Uh, so as it stands right now, they have they are the worst team uh, in the NHL. So it stands to reason that they would be in a pretty good position. I know it's not a lock, even if you have the worst record, but they would be in a good position uh, to get him. But in any event, I, it's I, I I just don't know. I just don't know. Even if you pick up any of these players, is it going to make them a little better? Ultimately, if it's not good enough to get them where they want to go, then they may as well just wait until the off season to make some moves. The only caveat I would give to that is Lars Eller. If we wait till the end of the season on Lars Eller, the caps get zilch. So I would be fine with them moving on from Lars Eller, but the other players, I guess, Anthony Mantha, you could throw in that mix as well. I just don't like it. So the LA Kings, the LA Kings are in a position to contend for the playoffs this year, but have been rumored to trade Matt Roy or Sean Walker by the March 3rd deadline. The 27 year old Roy has a 3.15 annual annual AAV this year and in 2023-24 uh, before he becomes an unrestricted free agent GM Rob Blake may be looking to free up cap space by trading either one of them by the deadline again two good options out there I think that uh, the caps do need to do something on the blue line if it is in fact their intention to make a push and I have no reason to believe that they they're not but you know it kind of harkens back to me to last year uh, when Brian McClellan was almost resigned to the fact that the team wasn't going to do anything and they kind of backed into victory by making it uh, to the playoffs and played the Panthers. Subsequently, they got eliminated in the first round. The Capitals are aiming to contend for a championship as long as Ovi is a member of the club. Injuries have been an issue for them this year and is a concern going forward, particularly for one of the oldest rosters in the league. Carlson's progression is working his way back from the injury could dictate how much GM McClellan prioritizes adding to the defensive position. Again, I've spoke on this. I'm in lockstep with the writer here. However, the club does not have any of their defensemen beside their injured star under contract beyond the season. Adding a defenseman with an extra year remaining on their current deal should be appealing to the Caps GM. So it is good, but it still brings me back to my original question. Would you rather have any one, three of those defensemen that I list, or would you rather have Dimitri Orloff back? I would rather have Dimitri Orloff back, wouldn't you? I know he's up for a new deal. Um, I want to I want to re up Dimitri Orloff. I want to re up um, Van Reams Dyke and uh, Jansen potentially. Uh, Matt Irwin is a guy, you know, you, you can't sing the praises enough of Matt Irwin. He's a guy that they put in the deep freeze and when they need him, they thaw him out and he comes in and he plays flawlessly. So that is my thing is I ultimately don't have any issues uh, for the most part with the Caps blue line. I'm going to prioritize and say, I want Orloff under contract. Faravari, He's restricted. They could just kind of, they could put that on a pause for a while. Same goes for Alexiev. I ultimately don't think that Lucas Johansson or Alexiev is ready for prime time yet. I just really don't have that feeling. So I think that ultimately the Capitals are in a position uh, to, you know, decide uh, what are they going to do with their blue line before they start, you know, moving future draft picks and putting this blue liner in here. 
have a come to Jesus moment with yourself and, and you know, Ted Leonsis and say, are the, you know, should we just re up Dmitry Orloff in the off season? Obviously he's going to demand a raise, but some of these players, you know, they're going to be a, a rental type situation, you know? So in the off season, you gave up a first round pick for a rental. Those are the decisions that haunt teams and they've haunted the capitals in the past. So I'm against it. So ultimately it's a measuring stick right now. And I know that they have up to March 3rd to make that decision. All of it for me hinges on John Carlson. And when he comes back, he is going to be reassessed this month at some point. If in fact, it's going to be later this season or next season, then I could see picking up a piece. Other than that, I am pretty happy with the Caps blue line, all things considered. I think that they've stepped up. You take a look at Gustafson, another one I want to have come back if at all possible. You know, played way better than I think a lot of people anticipated, better than I had anticipated. You know, a bit of a journeyman around the NHL. I wasn't really, you know, too sure if he was going to come here and set the world afire. But as it turns out, uh, has been a really solid addition. And I like uh, the Caps blue line. So to wrap up this segment here is this all hinges on John Carlson. If he's going to come back or he's perceived to come back sooner than later, then I say sit pat with what we have. If in fact he's not going to, then I say... Uh, you know, make a move. But I'm more concerned, you know, to just transition briefly back to what we were talking about off the top of the show about the forward core. They need more consistent goal scoring. Alex Ovechkin can't do it all. Kuznetsov is hot and cold. Mantha's hot and cold. There's too much hot and cold. Are you, did you get what I'm saying here? And those are just, you know, off the top of my head. If I'm going to make any kind of move, it's going to be with the forwards, especially the ones that aren't contributing. Like I spoke about yesterday with Bob Matthews, even Kuznetsov is in that mix. I know he's, you know, and that's that's the hard thing about being a Caps fan is it's been this core for so many years that there's almost an emotional attachment to some of these players, but you got to separate that. And you got to think about, you know, they spoke, you know, talk about in show business, it's show business, not show happy. It's the same thing about playing in hockey. It's about in the winning business. It's not about having an emotional attachment to a player just because they played here and were a part of the 2018 team. But in any event, if that's what I'm going to do, sit pat with a D if um, John Carlson is going to come back. But if there's going to be an upgrade, I see them doing it with the forwards. They need that scoring on a consistent basis. All right. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.